Hi everybody, this is the Baseball Hide, the amazing, spectacular, terrific, the great one, the people's champion, your host, the and welcome back to the Baseball Hide. I hope you like this video. Hit that subscribe button. So SMY has put out a list of the top five free agent targets that must need to have for this offseason. You'd think they would have done this about a month ago. I guess they did a revised one or whatever. Now, if you like this video, you like the Mets, hit that subscribe button. Ranking the Mets' top five free agent targets for the 24-25 MLB offseason. David Stearns and company are set up well to pounce in free agency. Let's see what this article goes. The Mets are in a strong position to be smartly aggressive on the free agent market this offseason, which is $170 million or so committed to the payroll for 2025 after a ton of money came off the books with their payroll situation in very strong shape over the next half decade. Steve Cohen, Dave Stearns, and the rest of the front office have a tremendous opportunity. Of course, the Mets won't just throw money around with reckless abandon. Not with the savvy and measured Stearns running baseball operations. The problem is why you won't find two of the biggest starting pitching free agents, Corbin Burns and Max Fried, on this list. According to the stuff I've seen online, two teams are in on Corbin Burns. We thought it would be the Mets. No, it's the Dodgers and the, and the Orioles. There's a chance one or both of them sign contracts that look like relative steals six or seven years from now with Burns, who could get a seven-year deal and or freed, having stayed healthy and ace-like during that span. The long-term contracts for pitchers over 30 years old very rarely work out. You also won't find Peter Lyons or Sherman Knight or Luis Severino on here, but that's just because they're internal free agents. This list will focus on external Free agents only. Both Alonzo and Manaya should be among the Mets' top targets. Um, and they, for various reasons, Pete, because he's been very good with the Mets, uh, sentimentality. Manaya, who pitched really well. Luis Severino should have taken the Mets' qualifying offer. It was kind of surprising that he did not. It was only one player that took a qualifying offer of the 13. That was uh, Nick uh, Martinez of the Cincinnati Reds. Number five on this list, which he's popped up, surprisingly, and that's Alex Bregman. Bregman should be viewed as a potential fallback option if the Mets aren't able to nab their top target, whose name you can probably guess. Bregman could fit in a scenario where the Mets re-sign Alonzo, Bregman at third, and Vientos at DH, or where they don't. Bregman at third, Vientos at first. There are reports that Bregman could be seeking an enormous deal some projections have him getting as many as seven years and close to $200 million. If that turns out to be where the bidding goes, the Mets should pass. I would pass. Because his, his numbers have declined. I mean, he's a good player. He's a winning player. But his numbers have declined. Something that, like five years, he could make a ton of sense. Bregman, who has never struck out more than 97 times in a season, but has been one of the best hitters in the game for nearly a decade, and a strong defender at third seems like a better bet than fellow free agent infielder William Damas, who's just a year younger than Bregman, whose strikeout rate is alarming. If the Mets believe Bregman's relatively down 2024 was a blip, it could be smart to pounce. Pairing Bregman for, with Francisco Lindor give the Mets two of the best all round infielders in baseball. Number four in this list, Blake Snell. Snell hasn't been nearly as reliable as Burns or Freed, when it comes to providing 180 or so innings a season, or pitching deep in games. But when he's on, he's one of the most dominant pitchers in baseball. And while it could take a seven-year deal to nab Burns and their seven-year seven deal to get free, it might only take a three- or four-year contract to sign Snell. I don't know about that. Snell can often walk too many batters, but he mostly makes up for that for missing tons of bats and limiting hits. He allowed just 5.6 hits per nine innings last season at the starting a league low 5.8 per 9 in 2023. Entering his age 32 season and coming off a year where he tossed just 104 innings over 20 starts, there is risk here. I would mention he's only pitched one game in the ninth inning, which was this year when he pitched a no-hitter for the Giants. So he's not a guy. He's a five-inning guy. 104 innings over 20, at 20 starts, that's five innings a game. So that's basically what you're going to get out of him. You can get five great innings in the second half. He's a very strong second half hitter. But in terms of just, uh, you want length out of this rotation. That's the one thing we know about this Mets rotation this year. So you want length out of it. 
Number three, Walker Bueller. Bueller is the only pitcher available this offseason via free, free agency who has legitimate ace potential. The Ramos certainly won't require a long-term deal. It seems likely that he'll ink a one- or two-year deal, potentially with the second year being a player option. In order to build his value back up following Tommy John's surgery, and a difficult regular season in 2024. Another plus for Garn Bueller is that the Dodgers did not extend a qualifying offer to him, which means any team that signs him will not lose a draft pick for doing so. He's a very interesting player, because you don't have to give up a lot of years on him. When Bueller is right, he is a number one starter. From 2018 to 2021, he had an ERA of 2.82. And while Bueller struggled at this past season from what was his first year back after having Tommy John surgery, in August of 2022, there are reasons to believe he'll be able to return to form in 2025 as he enters his age 30 season. In terms of free agent pitchers, he might be the easiest to, to, to uh, sign, just due to the fact that he doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, it's taken him a while to come back from his injury. Number two, Roki Sazaki. Now today, on on two on Wednesday. Rob Manfred said that he will be eligible to be signed on January 15th. How he gets posted by the Marines in Japan, uh, I'm, I'm not totally 100% aware of. Now, the word is he's going to probably go to the Dodgers. That's the early money on it. And you don't have to sign to a major contract. Suzuki is quite simply one of the most talented pitchers to ever hit the free agent market. He has a fastball that sits in the high 90s and touches 102. An outworldly splitter and impeccable command. He's, and since he's just 23 years old, he has accumulated only four years of service time in Japan. He won't be able to sign anything but a minor league deal if his contract counting toward his signing team's international bonus pool allotment. The above levels the playing field and the rumors surround Suzuki are all over the place. Some have him all but certain to go to the Dodgers. Others have him preferring a small market. Some others say he wants to be the biggest star wherever he goes. So no one really knows anything it seems. Whoever signs him will be getting a pitcher who needs to prove he can handle a big workload. He's never thrown more than 129 in the third innings, which is kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of consistent with his age. Because most pitchers at 23 years old have not thrown that many innings. So he's not out of the, you know, out of the realm of what pitchers are doing these days at his age. So that's not outrageous, that, that comment. But who has a legitimate chance to be the pe best pitcher in baseball? They say he's better than uh, Yamamoto. And number one, I wonder who that is. Soto is not only, and this one so is not only the best player in the free agent market, but one of the best players to ever hit the free agent market. Add to the above that he just turned 26 years old, is coming off a monster season, and is a proven playoff masher, and you get someone whose deal could eclipse 14 years and $600 million. Fortunately for the Mets, they have an incredibly strong position when it comes to their ability to make that kind of offer to Soto and not have any issues building a dangerous team around him for years to come if it takes it. Now, uh, the word is that the Mets have a chance. It supposedly offered him 15 years for $660 million. He's met with several teams, the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Phillies, the Red Sox, and the Blue Jays. It is believed that the Mets and the Yankees have equal chances. I felt that they had equal chances. I'm now feeling like they're at, the Mets have a 58% chance of getting Soto. Due to the fact of what how Steinberg said on Wednesday, that they felt they, uh, it wasn't that much enthusiasm in terms of what they what he thought they were going to get in terms of signing Soto. So, Soto is the priority. This, that is the big ticket item that if you're Steve Cohen, you have to sign him. Now, the Yankees have to sign him too. So to me, it's really down to two teams. Does he want to stay with the Yankees and the Bronx? Or does he want to come over to the to Queens and play for the Mets? He's going to get more money than he could possibly imagine. Because the words also, according to Michael Kay of the Yes Network, that the Mets will offer him $50 million more than any other team. So, for instance, if the Yankees offer him six hundred fifty million, the Mets will offer him seven hundred. Or if the Yankees offer him seven hundred, they offer him seven hundred fifty. That is the belief. Also, D David Stearns uh, has no problem um, signing a player who's twenty six years old. He signed many years ago 
Christian Yelich to a to a deal, a long term deal, and he was twenty six years old, twenty seven years old, about that age. So it kind of falls in line with what David Stearns wants to do too. Well, you let me know what you think about this. You let me know what you think about this video. Again, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the Baseball Hut, and I'll see you later.